The question 20 is on definite integrals. This is one of the easiest in the writing part. So the problems are very simple. Now I'm sure this may not come for your exam. You would get a bit complicated one, but let's start from the basic one. When you have integrals like this definite integral, and you have been, this is the given equation, and you have been told to find the derivative, f dash of x. You, you just have to supply, uh, substitute the upper limit. Apply the upper limit, that's it. If you're thinking why exactly, but if you remember, now say you derive something. Let me derive x cubed. The answer is 2, 3, x squared. Now let's integrate this. Integrate 3x squared. This will be 3x cubed by 3. Cancels off and you will have x cubed, right? So they are inversely proportional. I mean, see, the integral of anything must be its originally the derivative of that function, right? So it's kind of like that. So now over here, you have to find the derivative. This is integral thing, right? So all you need to do is leave this function as it is because that, that itself is its derivative. But all you need to do is substitute the upper limit. Now what happens over here is whatever is with respect to t, right? Just substitute the upper limit. It will become x squared minus 3x plus 2. That's the answer. That's it. No plus c or anything because it's derivative. Now even over here, if there is any constant, any number, it goes off. Okay. So it will be instead of t squared, all you need to do is x squared minus 3x minus 4. Now, what if you have something more than x? Now, this is not just x, right? It's more than x. So same. let's use the same concept. e minus x, uh, t becomes x squared. Then there is one more square over here, right? So this t becomes x squared. That's it. That's the first step plus 1. This much is done. Now, what you need to remember is you need to multiply this entirely with this derivative. The derivative of whatever, it's more than x, right? You need to do its derivative. Even over here, you basically derive it. What is derivative of x? It's 1. So, we just leave it. Okay? So, over here, it will be 2x. So, now what, what happens is 2x will be multiplied here. It will be 2x e to the power minus x to the power 4. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 2x. This would be the answer. Now, what about over here? Here, see, you should not have a number here. You should have the variable up. Now, you have a number. Number must be down that goes off. But what you do, what you can do is you need to swap it out. You need to swap this becomes x, this becomes 2. It will be secant t dt, right? But what, what happens when you swap this? You need to add a negative sign. This is the this is the actual way to do it. When you want to swap the limits, you need to add a minus sign. Now, don't go to do anything. No integration, nothing. Minus remains. It will just be secant x uh, dt goes. So, this is the function. So, you can see the answers are so simple. It's x squared minus 3x plus 2. x squared minus 3x minus 4. That is what we also got. And over here... Now, they have, not written, they have not multiplied this 2x inside. I have multiplied it for both the sides. But it's fine. If you're keeping it out, it's also fine. See, 2x is out. e to the power minus x to the power 4. Minus x power 4 plus 1. It's fine. Minus secant x. So, this is the thing. But what if you have a little bit more complicated two terms up and down? Now, imagine you start from your home. Okay? And you have to go to school over here. So this is your starting destination and this is your end destination. But you stopped over here. Say you stopped at a gas station to uh, fill gas. This is a point where you stopped. But then you continue and reach over here. So this doesn't matter. You ultimately started here and your end destination is the school itself. Now same way you can consider this. You can break this into any number of points. But remember from your home you stopped over here. But then from here again you go over here. The stopping can be dissolved. So, what you can do over here is the limits, e to the power x, you can split it out plus as long as it ends over here. So, you can stop anywhere. Let's stop at 0 and 0. You can stop it at 2 and 2. It's fine because they will anyways be dissolved, right? They'll go off. 
So this is how we can split it out. Over here, what happens? It will be sine t squared dt. Here also, it will be sine t squared dt. Now, here we cannot have the number up. So let's write minus integral e to the power x over here at 0. It will be sine t squared dt plus over here you can directly apply over here there's no problem it's zero it is sine t squared dt now what do you do instead of t all you need to do is substitute the e to the power x so it'll be e to the power x the whole square and multiplied by e to the power x because we need to derive this it's not just x that's it over here what happens it'll be sine 2 minus x the whole square and what is derivation of 2 minus x? It will be minus 1. So when you simplify it will be minus e to the power x sine e to the power 2x because I just multiplied 2 and x plus it will be minus why because minus times plus is minus sine of 2 minus x the whole square. So this is how we can easily solve it up. The answer will be that. It's the exact same answer. Sometimes your answer may be in a different form. The answer will be correct, but it's just in a different form. Um, that's fine because it's writing. If you write so much, it's more than enough. But if it's the MCQ part where you have four options, just try to rearrange and check for the options and you can write it out. So please try to do the other problems by yourselves. Over here, please remember, it will be a product rule. Okay. Yeah, it's clearly mentioned away. This product rule will be there. Why? Because you need to derive the second part, right? When you derive this, it'll be a product rule. Very simple. Please try these problems by yourselves. All these are worked out over here. This concept remains same. When you have two functions up and down, first split it out and then swap this up. Take this x squared up. Zero goes down and it becomes minus. See the minus sign. And over here, what happened? It became, instead of t, it became x squared. And then you need to derive this. Okay, over here they have written d by dx. I was writing it directly with derivation. I reduced the steps, but as long as this is all right, you know, because we know this is all basic stuff, you know, so you obviously know it. So you can directly write this. That is how we solve it up. That is the end of this 20th question. This is the last question in the exam scheme, but we have not yet done the explanations for the previous videos. I will try to do them very soon. And before I finish, a quick reminder to all of you, if you're finding these videos helpful, please do share it with your friends and also do consider subscribing to my channel. See you in the next video.